Hey everyone, this is a microphone built from scratch. It's not completely my idea though. I based it on a video from DIY Perks. He explains very well on how to build this from zero to the final result. In this video, I'm gonna show you my process and a couple of things that I did differently. So let's get into it. The microphone element we're going to use is called the JLI 2555 and it's used in microphones that cost around $500. If you order the element directly from the manufacturer, it actually only costs $12. But there's a lot that needs to be done before you can get it to work. The signals that this microphone picks up are very weak. To amplify this, we can use a transistor. Connecting this is pretty straightforward. One pin is called the gate and it's soldered directly to the microphone. The other pin we're going to cut because it's not being used, which leaves us with two other pins that are called the source and the drain. Every part within the microphone is super sensitive to sounds, even the wire. That's why we need to use a wire as thin as possible to reduce any vibrations. In my case, I salvaged the copper wire from an old electric Roomba motor. Another advantage of these wires is that they are enameled, so there will be no short circuit when they touch each other. You need to do some sanding before you can use them in soldering though. For even more protection, these wires need to be shielded. We can do this by using desoldering wire. You can use a screwdriver or some thicker copper wire to open it up and pull the small wires through. Now we have a beautiful shielded cable. Next up we're going to solder this to the microphone and check if the wires still make a good connection. The other side of our custom cable can be soldered to an audio cable. You can use any old audio cable that's still in the closet somewhere. To make sure the cable has a really good connection, I used multiple layers of heat shrink. Plus, playing around with the heat gun is always fun. The cable is ready, but the microphone is not done yet. There already is a transistor that amplifies the sound in the microphone, but unfortunately that's not enough. We need to build something that amplifies it even more. Some parts were not in stock, so I had to order the smaller versions. The parts that I ordered were so small that they could barely fit on my finger. This was definitely out of my soldering capabilities, so that's why you might see some other hands during the video. I will not go through the amplifier in detail. I tried to stay as close as possible to the DIY perks schematics. Unfortunately, the power supply did break during the build, so I had to switch from 5 volts to 220 volts because uh, that were the only parts that were still laying around. Also, instead of making this a USB microphone, I wanted to have an XLR connection, so I could use my existing audio interface and plug it into my ATA Mini Pro. These changes are documented in my own schematics and you can find them in the description of the video. When you're there anyway, also feel free to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Now that the difficult part is over, it's time for the casing. I used an aluminium mesh, cut out the circle, pressed it down through a tube which happened to be around the size that I wanted for the microphone. Then I used a soldering iron to solder the aluminium to the copper and close up the case. However, the tin did not really stick well to the aluminium. That actually caused some problems which will be addressed later in the video. My design is going to be a bit simpler than the one from DIY Perks, since I want it to fit on a regular microphone stand and microphone arm that I already own. I used a copper tube and bended it so it was as close as possible to a circle. I attached it to another copper tube that has a nut which perfectly fits on a standard microphone stand. I'll put a link to the microphone arm and the stand down in the video description along with the other parts that I used to build this microphone. Then using a flamethrower and some tin, I made sure that everything was attached to each other.
I closed up the microphone case and soldered on the hooks for the elastic bands. Now that all of the separate parts are ready, it's time to assemble the microphone. I spent quite some time finding out how the bands would look best. When I was finally happy with it, I put a very small amount of two component glue on it to make sure it does not accidentally move. Now that everything is in place, it's time to show you the final design. If you paid close attention in the b-roll, you might have seen that I split up the power supply from the receiver. This was done because there was a weird noise still present. If you split up the power supply from the receiver, it's less likely that noise will travel from one to the other. Unfortunately, that didn't fix it. After hours of debugging and trying different configurations with resistors and capacitors, we heard changes in the sound when my hand was close to the microphone cage. Apparently there was a problem with the Faraday cage. The aluminium was not able to melt together with the tin, that caused some interference to go through. I knew the cage was important, but I had no clue it was that sensitive. I ordered some copper mesh and created a new microphone cage for like the fifth time. But this time it worked way better and with that it's ready to be tested. Let me know what you think of the sound, because actually you've been listening to it throughout this whole video. Now let's compare it to another microphone that I like. This microphone is the Samsung Q2U and it's the microphone which I used in all of my previous videos. Now compare it to the DIY microphone. Uh, I think that uh, the DIY microphone has a bit of more has a bit of a more broader spectrum. It feels like it captures everything of my voice. Well, the Samsung Q2U actually has a bit of a lower, like it 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 makes my voice a bit lower. However, the uh, DIY microphone it does pick up every noise around me, and the Samsung microphone only picks up. Uh, noises that are like relatively close. So uh, for example, uh, in uh, when I was doing the voice recordings uh, on this microphone, there were some ambulances going by and usually before I didn't really have issues with that, but when I was listening this back, I heard the ambulances in the background. And uh, this microphone only picks up sounds that are very close to it. So if I would be doing some, something over there, it wouldn't be in the video. However, the price. In total, this microphone, the Perks advertises that it's about $40, but uh, I paid with shipping costs and I ordered uh, double the parts. I actually ordered two microphone modules to be safe and some other things I also ordered double. So I paid around 100 euros for this microphone and uh, this microphone was around 70 euros. So let me know what you think. Which one sounds better? Is it the Samsung? or is it the DIY microphone? Thank you so much for watching and uh, hope to see you on my next video. Bye bye.